The Witch's Wood by Haley Carpenter The sun had barely begun to peek through the trees when Alyssa went to gather herbs. No, she wasn't allowed to go into the forest alone. Not after her sister Idira had been caught doing something stupid with her friends. It really wasn't fair that Alyssa had to share Idira's punishment, so Alyssa woke up early. Sneaking out of the bed she shared with her sister and out the door while her family slept. She set from her family's modest cottage at the edge of the woods and pulled out a list of concise instructions written in her own hand the night before. Clover, the patch by the spring that Mama showed me and Dira. Tuberose, will be growing nearby. Allow the sun to awaken them just a little. Pennyroyal. The list eventually concluded with the one thing Alyssa had been putting off finding for months now. Red bamboo in the witch's wood. Red bamboo, not native to the region, rare even in native regions, and a test of luck to acquire. The witch's wood had been the nightmares of her younger years. People in the nearby city whispered about it when Alyssa and her younger sister Idira traveled to the marketplace. It was a patch of the surrounding wilderness, lush with exotic plant life and beautiful creatures. A patch of the surrounding wilderness where men would vanish and reappear, sometimes disfigured, sometimes dismembered, but always dead. There was a witch in the witch's wood, not a sorceress, humbly revered for her skill with magic like Alyssa, but a great and terrible murderess with the ability to kill with one twitch of an eyebrow. Or so the stories went. Alyssa had ventured into the witch's wood a grand total of once. She hadn't seen or heard anything as horrific as a bloodthirsty witch, but she had walked into a wall of mist that made her feel like she was being crushed from the inside out, and had come across a clan of three-headed squirrels that took her as a threat and chased her until she ran into a river. Alyssa was 18 now, and had learned much from the mages in the city. She could cast a clearing spell to get rid of mist, could trick three-headed squirrels with illusions of acorns before bolting. But older, more experienced users of magic? There were no guarantees Alyssa could face her and live. Nevertheless, her normal ingredients collected, Alyssa stood at the edge of her familiar forest, the trees became noticeably thicker and closer together where the witch's wood began, their trunks more gnarled and their branches spindlier. A sorceress does not fear another sorceress, she thought, gripping her basket of herbs tighter and rolling her shoulders back. I've been here before. I lived. I can do it again. The sky darkened as she took her first step. A chill ran down her spine as the wind wrapped around her body. She adjusted her glasses, drew her patched shawl closer, and continued. There was no mist or squirrels this time, but by the time Alyssa had finally climbed a tree to calculate the sun's position in the sky, she was ready to call it a day. The sun was reaching its highest point, and clouds had begun to form. From her perch on the branch of a sturdy oak, Alyssa began to reevaluate. Her parents must have noticed her disappearance by now. If she returned to the cottage now, she might be in less trouble. Maybe she could even make a case for how important it was that she collect herbs for her various spells and remedies. She shifted her weight and dropped a leg to the nearest branch below her. But that red bamboo. If someone was brave enough to acquire it, the red bamboo was key for the strongest protection spells, virtually unbreakable by anyone, magic user or not. Alyssa steeled herself. She wasn't Idira. She could prove that to her parents. She was stronger than her sister. She could do hard things. Alyssa descended from the tree, heart racing, adrenaline pumping. Picking her basket up from the base of the oak, she ventured deeper. It started to drizzle. Alyssa thought of her sister's face, careless and unbothered. Alyssa came across a swarm of furious magenta hornets. And Alyssa thought of Idira biting down a smirk as her father scolded her, and cast a perfect shield charm until she was safe. Later, as the wind picked up to its most intense yet, 
and Alyssa paused her search to readjust her shawl. She saw it. Clearly, she had never been this far into the witch's wood. She had never stumbled across a dilapidated stone cottage before. Dilapidated was a kind way of describing the hovel. Entire portions of wall were missing, exposing a threadbare interior. The thatched roof was beyond patchy and the door was blown clear off its hinges. Remnants of a garden overtook the front of the cottage, wild vines and stalks stretching and choking. Alyssa's breath caught. Perhaps it was from spying the vibrant hue of red bamboo twisted in the old garden, or perhaps it was from when she saw the chimney. Besides crumbling under its own weight, smoke was rising. It, it couldn't be. This couldn't be it, could it? The lair of the witch of witch's wood? She took deep breaths, trying to smell anything out of the ordinary. Boiling blood, perhaps, maybe searing flesh. She even listened for the sound of cracking bones or malicious cackling, but there was long silence. No signs of life save for the smoke in the chimney, but just to be safe, she extracted a knife from a seam in her right boot. Witch or no witch, real or made up, that bamboo was within reach. She didn't disintegrate on the spot when approaching the bamboo, so she twisted her arm to get a good cutting angle. The sound of her knife on the plant rang in her ears, and she moved her wrist faster to cut quicker. A stalk tumbled, and Alyssa caught it before it could fall to the ground. Without stopping to cut the plant into smaller pieces, she gathered the bamboo and threw it over one shoulder and made to leave. But she didn't get very far before the grunting began. The sheer surprise of hearing grunting in the middle of the forest stopped her in her tracks. She looked around for the source as the sound grew louder. Wild pigs! She dropped her basket of herbs and stalk of bamboo on the spot. There were three of them, and they were massive. They snarled and grunted as they charged Alyssa, eyes glowing a vicious magenta. She dashed for the nearest tree, a pine with scraggly needles that poked and scratched at her. She lost her balance, and as she stumbled, so too did her glasses falling down the length of the pine tree and leaving Alyssa to cling to a branch with her entire body. The boars were getting closer. Muttering a prayer to every one of her mother's favorite deities, Alyssa shut her eyes and shouted the first thing that came to mind. I'm a witch too! They did not stop. But they didn't surround Alyssa's tree either. Instead, they continued past slowing down once they reached the cottage. Alyssa couldn't see much without her glasses, but she opened her eyes anyway and gaped at the fuzzy image of the forest floor. She had actually done that. She didn't want to think about how long Idira would laugh at her and tease her had she seen any of this. Shaking and more than ready to leave the witch's wood, Alyssa began to move. So you're a witch as well. Alyssa's head whipped in the direction of the new voice. She lost her footing and tumbled down the length of the tree, landing with a hollow thud as darkness overtook her. When she woke up to the sound of pigs greedily devouring a meal, Alyssa was sure she had been fed to the terrifying magic boars. But despite her leg throbbing in pain and the rest of her body aching all over, there was no chomping action going on. Nothing was eating her. You are not a very clever witch. Alyssa seized at the sound of that voice, the same one that had her tumbling out of the pine tree, shrill, deliberate, laced with venom that had Alyssa's heart racing. Who... She cleared her throat and tried again. Who are you? The owner of the voice was near her, just out of sight. Alyssa strained to hear over the sound of pigs as footsteps approached. Alyssa braced herself, fingers searching madly for her knife. Surely she had tucked it back into her boot after cutting the bamboo? A form entered her periphery, and Alyssa steeled herself for an attack. Instead, something dropped into her lap. My glasses? Unscathed, the voice rasped, somewhere very close. Alyssa shoved the glasses onto her face and promptly startled. The visage of a woman stood above her, 
a pear-shaped body swathed in white fabrics, frayed and dirtied, and covered by a thick, black veil. She held filthy hands outstretched, palms up, but she did not make to help Alyssa up from where she lay. Alyssa didn't feel ready to stand anyway. The woman exuded magic. It rolled off her in thick, suffocating waves of magenta and red, finding Alyssa's own aura and tugging, almost as if to test its strength. Alyssa tried to swallow, but her throat was dry. You? Me, the woman said curtly. And you? You said you were a witch. Yes, I mean, I practice magic. I... The woman crossed her arms and Alyssa gulped. I only entered the witch's wood for red bamboo, see? I wouldn't have come if it wasn't absolutely necessary and I didn't want to be out this far, but I couldn't find it. So I kept walking and, and I deeply apologize for trespassing on your property. And if you must kill me, at least see to it that these ingredients go to my family. My mother is no good at potions and green magic, but she'd... Alyssa breathed. She went to speak more, but the woman rose a hand. Alyssa ogled. Stop talking. The woman retreated to a small fireplace. On the mantel stood Alyssa's basket of ingredients and the stalk of bamboo. Given the contents you've collected, the woman said, veiled face carefully scanning the materials. I suspect you are not fond of the term witch. Why would these are for healing, for protection and safety? You are too simple of heart to call yourself a witch. Uh, yes, I... May I have my things back? Once you are free to go. Alyssa tried to sit up, but the action sent spasms of pain up her leg and abdomen. She dropped back onto the surface. The woman, the witch, the witch of witches would, had put her on. Instead, she tried to make sense of her surroundings. The witch had her back to Alyssa, so she let her eyes roam the interior of the cottage. It wasn't in much better shape than the outside. Herbs dangled from the ceiling in some sort of decoration, but the space was strikingly sparse. If Alyssa twisted her neck enough, she could see that there was a whole wall blown out of the cottage, exposing a pig pen set up outside where the three boars were eating. Are you going to kill me? She asked the witch. The witch did not reply for a long, terse moment. That depends on you, Alyssa of Silji. Have you committed a crime you must atone for with your own life? Swallowing down the obvious follow-up of, How do you know my name? Alyssa thought hard. I'm not sure. That is, if we're confessing to things, then yes, I'm the one that stole Papa's pickaxe. I thought I could use it for a gardening project, but I broke it and buried it in the woods, and one time Mama tripped on the steps and started crying, and I was too tired to get up and help, and another time I cursed Idira for making fun of me with her friends in the marketplace, and then her girlfriend broke up with her, and she was devastated for weeks. The witch raised her hand again, and Alyssa silenced. Why are you really here, Alyssa of Silji? Alyssa gulped and the witch was silent, waiting. But her heady stare made Alyssa think. She already knew the answer. To show my parents that I'm more responsible than my sister. And yet here you are. You have broken your leg, and your face is bleeding. The witch returned to the fire, stirring a brew she had on. There are creatures in these woods that will pounce the instant they sense you. Alyssa waited. Surely the witch had something to say about her previous transgressions. But no judgment ever came. Instead, she tended to her brew. With nothing else to do, Alyssa watched in trepidation as the boars left their pen and ambled into the cottage, nipping at one another and squealing. Are they your familiars? Alyssa asked. The woman did not spare a glance. No. As if summoned, a giant white dog poked its head up from under the cot Alyssa was lying on. She screamed. 
The boars went wild. The witch turned to Alyssa with one hand on her hip. That is my familiar, and you are little more than a squealing milkmaid. The dog sniffed at Alyssa in curiosity, before jumping on the cot and burrowing itself along her prone side. This is the strangest day of my life, she said. You practice magic, milkmaid. How strange can this be? I'm used to practicing magic around people that don't. In a world where boars don't typically grow the size of hay bales and have pink, glowing eyes. Alyssa thought the witch had gone back to ignoring her, but then, as she began to ladle her brew into a small stone bowl, she hummed and thought, I suppose I would not know what that is like. The witch laid the bowl at the edge of the cot Alyssa was occupying. She took in the deep, relaxing scents of lavender and flux seed. A calming drought, Alyssa said. I intend to mend your leg, milkmaid, the witch said, going through various cabinets to collect medical supplies. I would ask you to drink it for full effect, but I doubt you are that trusting of the witch of witches would. And under typical circumstances, yes, that was very true. But Alyssa knew from the experience of a broken arm, sprained wrist, two twisted ankles, and a total of seven broken toes, that the pain of mending was not fun to deal with without a good, strong, calming potion. The dog beside her nuzzled her neck, breathing in deep as if it had fallen asleep. Well, if this dog was the witch's familiar, and it didn't seem to wish her any harm, I'll take it. When the witch did not give any indication of hearing this, Alyssa continued, If you think I should. Very well. The witch sat beside Alyssa. Instead of reaching for the drought, her long fingers grasped the edge of her dark veil. Alyssa watched wide-eyed as the witch's face came into focus, with a voice like a haggard crone out of nightmares. Alyssa had been expecting a face to match. Instead, the witch's ashen skin was smooth and supple. Only the silver hair that streamed down her back and the tired, dull amber of her eyes betrayed any indication of age. The witch raised an unimpressed eyebrow at Alyssa's gawking and lifted the bowl of potion to Alyssa's lips. She drank, tentatively at first, but consumed it all the same. Alyssa sank back into the cot as the witch's hands glossed over the herbs and medicines she had gathered. She whispered a spell under her breath, and her hands became clean before Alyssa's eyes. She lifted a pair of scissors to the hem of Alyssa's twill pants. I will need to see what I am doing, she murmured in explanation. Alyssa gulped, but nodded. As the witch cut into the fabric, her amber eyes flicked to Alyssa's face. Barley will comfort you if you wish. She insists on doing so. The dog licked Alyssa's cheek in confirmation. Barley. Alyssa vowed to commit that to memory. She stroked the thick white fur of the dog and focused on the warmth she radiated. Do the boars have names too? The witch scrunched her nose fractionally as she applied a salve to Alyssa's wounded leg. I thought they scared you, milkmaid. Names have magic, Alyssa said matter-of-factly. The witch shook her head. Khan, Dharma, and Revan. And yet you named your familiar Barley? The witch's hand stilled, her eyes darted to meet Alyssa's. Sorry. The witch continued in silence. After what felt like eons, she clicked her tongue. Alyssa, absent-mindedly combing her fingers through Barley's fur, and wondering whether her parents would put her on permanent chicken duty if she survived this startled. What is it? I'm about to set the bone. Think of something calming. Alyssa barely had any time to process this before the sharp crack of her bone being realigned. She buried her face into Barley's neck and thought desperately about something, anything to keep her mind grounded as her head went light. Falling out of a tree, no. Charging pigs, absolutely not. The spring mama had shown her an idea. Mama singing traditional melodies from their motherland. Idea harmonizing, the world stopping for a moment to listen. You can breathe again, milkmaid. 
Alyssa's eyes snapped open. The witch was staring down at her, wiping Alyssa's bloodied face with a damp cloth. You have loud thoughts, little one. Sorry. Unnecessary. She closed her eyes, stern face melting into something almost soft. Your love for your mother and sister is beautiful. Alyssa laughed in spite of herself. She smothered it into Barley's chest when the witch furrowed her brow at her reaction. Why am I here then, disobeying Mama and spiting Dira? The witch clicked her tongue again. How very human. She continued her work by applying a salve to the cuts and bruises littering Alyssa's face and neck. Alyssa rolled her eyes upwards where she caught a patch of cloudy skylight from one of the many holes in the roof. They rolled on by, and Alyssa swallowed her fear enough to ask the one question plaguing her since waking up in this strange place. Do you really kill people? Yes, an immediate answer. Alyssa pushed up on reflex, but a firm hand to her chest sent her back on the cot. Why? This answer did not come so immediately. The witch considered her next words. A man chased his young fiancé through the woods. He hurt her, beat her, did unmentionable things to her. She, on the other hand, passed out from the stress of it all. I approached them and saw a limp, bruised woman in a monster's arms, limbs flailing about much like a rag doll. Before him there was a thief. His lover discovered his identity and broke off the relationship. He slit the lover's throat while they lay together and made off with all the valuables he could grab. The lover was found dead in his bed, but the murderer had run straight into the witch's wood. The witch gathered dressings from beyond Alyssa's sight. She was silent as she began to wrap them around Alyssa's leg. A woman from the city? Alyssa whispered. The witch's amber eyes were on her again. She went looking for her granddaughter in the witch's wood. A search party found her in the river, chopped to pieces. She had murdered her own daughter ten years prior. She intended to do the same to her granddaughter. The child is safe in another country. The witch continued as if she had said nothing. That doesn't seem extreme to you? The witch's wood is a place for justice, little milkmaid. It is my calling to facilitate it. But that's not justice, that's murder. The witch's eyes darkened. She tilted her head, considering Alyssa. Do you really think this is the time to challenge me, Alyssa of Silji? No, but what? It was less of a question, more of a demand. Where's the line? How bad does someone have to be to deserve death? My sister got us grounded because she scared a friend so badly they fell into the river and almost drowned. Would you have to kill her if she were in your vicinity? I thought you were angry with your sister. You can't, you can't just kill people. Capture them, send them back to the authorities, turn them into squirrels, I don't know. But death? That's too much. I'm surprised, Alyssa of Silji. I thought you were wiser than to challenge the witch of Witch's Wood. Alyssa didn't know where she felt she had the right. Maybe it was a compulsion to tell the truth, to be judged for what she had done that day and what it may have cost her. I'm not wise. I'm here because I was mad at my sister. I almost got myself killed because of it. It's not my place to act innocent now. The witch stood and gathered Barley in her arms, and Alyssa sat up, wincing, but the witch made no move to keep her down. If you're going to kill me, could you at least tell me your name? The witch's amber eyes locked with Alyssa, but this time, Alyssa resolved to look back. The witch furrowed her brow and rested a hand to Alyssa's forehead. Alyssa shivered at the cool touch of fingers, but did not break eye contact. You are too curious for your own good, Alyssa of Silji.
I just don't want to call you the witch in my thoughts. I don't care. With that, she slid her hand over Alyssa's eyes, and the world went black. When she woke to the sound of water trickling in the distance, Alyssa was sure the witch was planning on keeping her as a prisoner. Cracking an eye open, she startled at the late afternoon sunlight that reflected off the lens of her glasses. Sitting up, she found herself in a bed of soft clover beside the spring her mama had shown her years ago, the very one she had begun her herb collecting journey at at the beginning of the day. Her basket was beside her, not a single leaf or stem missing, and the stalk of bamboo laying next to it. Hello? She called into the trees. Nothing. Resigned, Alyssa gathered her things and gingerly stood to her feet. The hem of her pants had been sewn together with neat stitching, and her leg was wrapped beneath it, and hurt worse than it ever had, but the walk to her family's cottage wasn't far from the spring. The sun was setting. She was going to be in trouble, for sure. As the cottage came into sight, her sister burst through the door and rushed towards her, yelling to her parents that Alyssa was back, intermingled with curses directed at Alyssa for being the idiotic sibling and scaring everyone half to death. As Idira hugged Alyssa around the middle and dragged her to the cottage, Alyssa tried to explain the state of her leg before something caught her attention at the edge of the trees. A large white dog watched her with ageless amber eyes, waiting to make sure Alyssa made it home safely. You've just heard The Witch's Wood, written by Haley Carpenter and narrated by Shane Richardson. If you have a story that you'd like to share with the world through Riders on the Roof, follow the instructions in the description below.